<laughs> All right. Yeah, Bianca looks classy. I look like I left my pants on the fucking car. This is really good. <laughs> Like, oh, let me try to be a sexy clown. <laughs> and this bitch shows up. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So I, I, I'm sure there's a few questions and, from the audience, but uh, let's. I'm just curious. You know, did uh, did the movie happen first, or did would, did this happen as a result of RuPaul's Drag Race? We Chicken started. Egg. We started crowdfunding before Drag Race. Uh, made a little bit of money. Thank you, all who donated. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> thank you. I'm sure there's a lot of people here, so thank you. Uh, there's a lot of trips to the post office. Um, yep. But uh, and then uh, and then we took a break, and then Roy did Drag Race, and then. Well, what happened basically was that we started fundraising, we got a chunk of money, and then when you get Drag Race, you can't tell anybody you're doing it. Now this happens like a year before, so I had to let a few key people know, so I let him know, and it was kind of fucked up because we had already gotten this money, and then I had to disappear, so I assumed that everybody thought I had taken the cash and went to Tijuana and bought titties and a young boy because I was missing for like the next few months and we couldn't say shit. And you're not allowed to announce it. We filmed the show in, in June and July and we couldn't announce it until they announced it, which was December. So it's like all this time people are like, mm-hmm, I gave you money for this movie, bitch. And you come back with luggage and new teeth. So it was one of those things that... It was kind of scary, but then we can announce it after it all happened. But it was about three years ago that we Yeah, started. it was before Drag Race, yes. But many people on social media want to tell me, you wouldn't have that movie if it wasn't for Mama Ru. Oh, Lord. But the thing is, that you can't explain it to fucking idiots, but it was in the works prior, prior to it. Because unlike other Drag Race people, I didn't put out an Shit album out. or yeah. a shitty video. I prefer to do a video. Well, because you know, we got enough bad drag queens who can't sing. Mainly of RuPaul, but yeah, we want RuPaul. <laughs> Don't film that. The check already cashed. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> In case anyone's filming, I love you, Mama Ru. Without you, I would not be a success. You changed my life. <laughs> you can post that. You can post that. All right, let's uh, take uh, some questions from the audience. Uh, and say, shout it, shout out your question, and let's make it short and not a statement. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yes. How much did you stick to the script, and how much was improvised? Well, the, the, the interesting thing was Matt had written several versions of the, the script throughout the years, and I'm horrible with learning lines and following a script. That's not true. He's actually really bad. No, it's really bad. Uh, so uh, he, would, he would write something, and I would read it, and I was like, oh, this is funny. And then one day I was reading something, and I'm like, oh, my God, that's really funny. And he's like, you said that like two days ago. I'm like, oh, oh okay. I didn't realize because I drink a lot. But he was capable of taking things that I said and work it into the script. And what was great about filming, because I had 18 days, uh, for my scenes to happen because I was traveling. So we had to cram everything in. So we'd go in and we'd do his version of what was written and then he would allow you to do another version of what you wanted to add. And then we just trust him to pick what happened. But once you get in the room with Bianca Lee and once you get in the room with Rachel Dredge, all kinds of shit just started coming out. So it was a lot of fun. But the first day, because uh, I'm fucking this cat, you just hold the legs, is something I've said for many years. And the first day... Look on Rachel's face. Day one. Day one is Rachel's day and it's me opening that door and there she is and we go through it and I say, I'm fucking this cat. You're like, and her face, she just went... And let me just... Rachel Dredge is like this fucking tall. When you see me next to her, I'm not even wearing the heels in that scene because it was too drastic for us. So that bitch is like a little pocket, a little pocket woman, like this fucking big. But she was wonderful to work She's with. Like, so. I swear I read the script, but yeah. that was just, whoa, that was a lot. Yeah, yeah, fucking this cat. It just took her by surprise. Anytime you fuck a pussy, people get nervous. <laughs> it's true. It's a lot. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Again, this is an 18-plus screening. <laughs> we hope. I hope so at this point. Uh, we have a question down front here. Hi. Hi. Uh, what was the inspiration for when to write this particular story set in high school? Inspiration. Um, God, yeah. I don't know. I wish I had a better story. Um, I, like, I was new to New York out of film school, and I was like, oh, this sounds funny, because I was drunk at a concert. Uh, and I was, <laughs> Lots of drinks going on. Yeah, I was, I'd known Bianca for a long time, and I was like, oh, she's really funny. I think this could work, and it just kind of did. Um, originally, I wanted her to be a, like a, a post office worker, so she could go postal. But a post office but, worker who's a bitch isn't yeah. really a movie. That's kind of like a documentary. <laughs> so that wasn't gonna sell. If I'm behind glass and being a cunt to everybody, they would go. 
<laughs> that's a comedy? That's real fucking life. You know what I mean? I thought yelling at children would be funny. Yeah, so yelling at children would nice. I said, I wish my teacher would talk like that. Wouldn't that have been great? <laughs> Shit stain. Man boobs. <laughs> Will, it was just nasty. Yes. Friend? It was long. Hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah long. we had, you know, I had 18 days for, for the, the crunch of it. Uh, he had filmed a lot of stuff before me, a lot of stuff after, and in the middle of it, I left to go to Amsterdam uh, to uh, do my show and then fly back. So it was kind of hectic uh, going back and forth. But the great thing, Rachel Dredge taught me something brilliant because I come from theater where I thought I have to learn the whole script from beginning to end and know what's going on. And I was horrified because there's a lot of fucking dialogue. And um, Rachel was genius. She would, she would read her script like 10 seconds before she did the scene and she would know all of it. And I was like, this fucking bitch. And so I'm trying to be professional in the corner. Couldn't get the first line. And then after you started looking at it, that that way it was great because you didn't have to memorize it yeah you didn't have to memorize it for long term you just needed to film those scenes and then we had to move on so she taught me a great trick but they were they were pretty long days they were like 12 we hours trying to keep them to 12 hour days yeah. a week sometimes we sometimes they went like, yeah they went like longer every day we were non-union yeah. and it was kind of that thing like in drag out of drag in drag out of drag <laughs> a lot of fire convenient for you <laughs> and it was hot yeah it was hot yeah it was that's why hot. we were in the shade in those scenes outside uh, yeah the, the, the stuff on this like the road it was 107 degrees when we were shooting which i don't know what that is in celsius yeah. does and that was a stand-in that was bianca stand-in who didn't yeah. know that he was gonna be half he was gonna have to be in drag that day he thought we were joking it was brutal no they asked for a brown boy to a brown boy about five nine to come in and do this and so of course they think it's something grand and this poor guy shows up and then they inform him he's got to get in drag and he's like oh, yeah, you're fucking with me right and they're like no no we don't have time yeah Go. so they put him in drag <laughs> they have pictures of him we got to post those pictures there's pictures of him he actually does look like he my little like my little cousin uh but he's there with sunglasses and that big wig on driving a stick shift it was some funny shit because I can't, I can't drive stick shit. this farmer comes outside and sees what we're doing. He's like, what's with that ugly lady? <laughs> oh, no. My life. Practically my twin. Yeah. Practically my fucking twin. <laughs> There's a question in the back there. Uh, how did you decide which of the uh, RuPaul girls to cast? Oh, that was my question. <laughs> Ooh. This has nothing to do with me. Because as soon as we said we were doing a movie, every nasty bitch wanted to be in it. And I said, I didn't want to have any, I didn't want that. And that was his, no, it, was his it was his baby. I was like, don't put me in the middle of this shit. Because could you imagine Darian Lake is my friend? Oh. But, no, but I mean, there was a lot of, there was a, a sequel. Be a there's sequel. a lot of great queens. And I said, you know, I just don't want that responsibility. And the ones who were smart that are my real friends knew that it was like, look, it's not up to me, whoever Matt wants, because he specifically knew what he liked. Well, that's, yeah, they were, they were just kind of our favorites. And yeah. And, 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 Willem and, a... and Willem and Shangela weren't being booked, so they were available for <laughs> filming. <laughs> it's not like they were home counting money or anything. No, they, they, they were excited to work for minimum wage. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It was much less. <laughs> it's true. Um, and Alyssa lives in Dallas, which is where we she shot the movie. She looked down the street. Oh, Alyssa, Alyssa yeah. was around the corner, but I'm going to tell you. Which we didn't know. Alyssa is, is probably one of my favorite people because she's hysterical and she has no idea that she's funny. And she didn't read the whole script. She just read her part. And she got, he sent her the script. In 30 seconds. In 30 like, seconds, so I'll do it. And so then we were discussing it. Her name was Ambrosia Salad. And she discussed this with me and I called her up and I said, are you ready? She's like, yes, mama, I know my part. It's clean, it's consistent. Concise, it's pageant material. I've got all of my dialogue. I am set. I'm gonna be Miss Ambrosia Salad. I'm gonna be Ambrosia Salad Light. I'm gonna be lettuce. I'm gonna be walnuts. I'm gonna be chopped. And I didn't. I'm listening to her. She's like dressing on the side. I'm gonna be the best salad there is. Well, two days later, I had to tell the stupid bitch that Ambrosia Salad is a fruit salad. And when she found out, she was like. Why are, you, why are you ruining my dreams? I thought the salad was a salad. I'm like, no, it's a different kind. Miss Bianca, why are you doing this to me in the salad? So, she's not, you know, actually sane in a couple of states, but she was quite lovely. She lived on the street from the bar, so when she got she there, did. she was like, whoa, you all flew in for this? Yeah, she was around the corner. How convenient. No, she was wild. Uh, right here. Is there a blooper rail, and will we get to see it? Uh, you know, yeah, there, there is. I gotta say, as like, long as the movie. 
Oh, well, it was actually really good in we had most a, of his lines. There were a couple of flubs, but yeah, we had a lot there was of a scene with, with, with you and Rachel where it was actually like watching an episode of SNL where they would break, and Rachel just started crying. <laughs> she got the giggles, she she got so the giggles one day, and I don't know what it was. And the, you know, a lot of those scenes, it's like, because she was coming in, and she had a schedule, and I was coming in doing mine, so she was like, do you mind standing in with me for my close-ups? And I was like, sure. You know, I'm like, of course, bitch. So uh, I go in, and I'm not even on camera, and so it's it's the first scene when I come into the office, and she's got that lipstick, and it's all that, you know, it's the first time you see it. And so she comes in, and she's trying to get her lines together, and I'm standing there feeding her her lines, and then she just starts laughing. She's like, I can't, I can't look at your face. And I'm like, but you asked me to be in this scene. Yeah, but I can't look at your face. I'm like, what what can I, I don't know you need to figure something out because I can't look at your face so I had to put a board in front of my face but stand there so she wouldn't laugh and that's the bloopers we have for like 10 minutes of her just cackling <laughs> my face was that funny to that bitch <laughs> rude and Bianca Lee is a, an actress out of New York and yes. uh, and she we always want her yes she's amazing um, and we didn't know if she could do it because of a play that you were doing, and flew yes. flew directly from our set to Edinburgh. Yes, yeah. I did. We, yeah, you know. we made it work. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it was wonderful. It you know, it's one of those times in your life where two people want you at the same time, and you have to negotiate it. And you're like, oh my God, it must be getting somewhere, because we had to work it all out. But you guys knew each other from New York. Yes. 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 There's just two things that I would like to say. Number one, Bianca Del Rio was a successful entertainer before RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> and she, despite her, her wit and her insults on stage, she is the nicest, most generous person I know in this business. Security. Security. <laughs> well, and I gotta tell you this. She's one of the most talented people, and immediately when the part came up, I was like, she's got to do this, she's got to do this, and we worked it out, and it was great to have her on set, because it was just one of those things where, you know, you're kind of like a fish out of water. I mean, the beginning I am, with, with all of the craziness around me, and I didn't really have, I didn't know anybody else on the set, because I was doing these first few scenes, and when she was there, it was like, thank God, and we had done uh, a lot of shows together and hung out together in New York. We did some horrible reading of Steel Magnolias. Oh. <laughs> with, yeah, it was quite amazing, and and, uh, and the children's hour. And the children's hour. But uh, still, my nose was really funny because she was playing Truvy and I was Weezer. And wait, the casting gets worse. The one playing Shelby was Mimi, I'm first. It's the only time the audience was like, don't drink the juice, let her die. That's what they were waiting for. But we hit it off. We hit it off then, and it was great. So I was so glad to get to do this with her. Thank you. We rehearsed that, by the way. No, we did. No. Remember that, though? When she started having that seizure and everybody started laughing. <laughs> uh, last yeah, row, other question. Don't give her candy. <laughs> oh, can you repeat that? Was that the ice from the Breakfast Club? I wish. No. <laughs> We're not Where that bad. Yeah, no. uh, no, oh, was... the library did look like it. Yeah, the library did look like it. Uh, no, it was uh, uh, Garland High School. Yeah, Garland High School in Texas, yeah. right outside of Dallas, and they really supported us. It was summer, and the film department was like, "Just come and use our boot, our school for your drag queen." Movie. And there was air conditioning. <laughs> they were like, "Please don't bring the titty cake." <laughs> they asked for an alternate cake. <laughs> I have too much titty. Yeah. Right here. It's just two cupcakes on the thing. Bianca, I absolutely love you, but my question is for the other Bianca. Oh, well, she's the original Bianca. She, when I first moved to New that's York. That's going to be the, my, my you know that's, autobiography. Yeah. But you got to tell that story about Bianca because it's funny because there's, you know, not many drag queens have the same name, but then she had a moment when I moved to town and then she had been there and been very successful and everybody knew who she was and then I came around. I, I, if you just said Bianca, it was me. You know, and then Bianca came to town. I was like, who is this bitch with my name? And ruining it. And then she just took off right away, and everybody loved her, but she became hugely successful. And now she's the one named Bianca, and I'm Bianca Lee, and I love it. I'm very happy to be Ethel to her, Lucy, anytime. <laughs> well, what was the question? Was the question the... was... <laughs> I never mind. what my question was going to be. How did it feel to work beside... Oh. Well, you know, we, we had done a couple plays together, and she is just astounding. And if you, if you ever are lucky enough, if you're an actor, to, to work with her, 
She'll help you with your hair, your makeup, your cos... Like, she can do it all. She's a true, true artist. We had so much fun on set. And, of course, Matt was very kind and wonderful, wonderful to work with. And we would just do these scenes, and it was hot as hell. And, of course, I have to come up with some stupid lines. Was, it, was the caftan line mine? The poncho line was yours, yeah. Because it was like, it's just a it's poncho, a poncho bitch. bitch. It's, it's a poncho bitch. And I thought, oh, no, no. I'm walking out the scene going, this bitch ain't going to get a laugh. That's not part of the contract. No, no, no. No, I, would think, I would add a no, no, line, no. and it would be funny. And then Bianca would add a line, and it would be funnier. And then it's ten and minutes I'd later. And I add another line, and it should, I said, all right, she's got to get the last... No, no, it's just the scene's became 25 minutes. <laughs> they ended up getting really long. But yeah, it's completely. a joy to be able to, to improvise and, and work with somebody, and we just, we, we well, knocked it Well, it's great to work with people that you click with and people that you respect, because usually you're stuck with assholes or people you don't know or, or you know, or people that are too grand. And, like, you know, we all stood in each other's scenes and fed each other lines and did what we had to do. It was, it was great. I mean, I wish I had something hateful to say, but they were all quite lovely, you know? <laughs> No diva moments, really, on the no. whole show? Well, there was one diva well, moment, I mean, but that's why she's just the weather woman. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding! I'm kidding! Right. But it really was a great shoot. No, it was great. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. No, we're grateful for all the, all the cameos. I mean, how fun is that? I mean, Margaret Cho makes me piss myself. <laughs> I mean, that witch, I, I picked yeah. color for you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we have one last question. You don't come back. Hand yeah, you don't come back. Bye. <laughs> Postal worker idea. How much did this story change or evolve from its inception through to the end of the film? Were there any moments where you're like, oh god, no, we have to completely remake where this is going? Yeah, a lot of times. I mean, it was a, it was the postal thing. It was a short, and then it became a feature, and then we threw it out, and they started over, and then but then we did a reading. We kind of revised it. Then I had a with Bob the drag queen um, that did the reading with us, um, and then God, there was a moment where we had a, we had a meeting and. And a, a producer was like, you cannot make this movie for the budget that you have. And I was like, yes, you can. <laughs> and he was like, I'm like <laughs> I know how to do the budgets. <laughs> no, I think you set this up. You were like, tell him to cut some stuff. And, yeah. and then I did. Yeah. But I didn't, cut, I didn't cut the volcanoes. I didn't cut the, the football scene. Uh, there was a lot of stuff that like, needed to stay. And, and yeah, we, you pulled it out. You made it happen. Well, we, you know, Dallas is, is, is nice, cheap, and easy. And uh, yeah, we, we had a... <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for producers, Ash Christian, that are, are, are willing to take a chance. Thank God for alternative casting and uh, great film festivals like this. Inside Out's been nothing but great to us, so thank you. Uh, just couldn't be happier. Thank you so much. I think we're, we're out of time, so thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. And now we're going to... Uh, Let's go party! Oh, we got an after party. Yeah, party at where's the, what is it called? I don't remember. Second floor. Me? Second floor. Second story. Second. Oh, sh <laughs> ask, 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 ask the people from is the it on your ticket. Ask the Twitter. It's oh, it's on your ticket. So we'll go ahead. Let's get drunk. Oh my God. All right. Thank you for coming out. <laughs> <laughs>